In this video, I will present the remaining six movements of the suite in C minor by Jean-Nicolas Geoffroy. These are Gavotte, Menuet, Rondeau, Autre Courant, in other words, another or a second Courant, Gigue, and Chacon. In the previous video, I mentioned that Geoffroy's music can have unusual or quirky elements to it, and I think we can definitely observe such elements in a couple of these movements. In addition, we also get a glimpse of a very unusual feature of the manuscript that contains his music, and that is that some movements, and in a couple of cases entire suites, appear in more than one tonality. To make matters more complicated, the two versions are usually not identical, and differences can range from an extra ornament or two to entire passages having different details added or subtracted. I addressed that issue in more detail in my recording of Geoffroy's F minor suite, which also exists in G minor, and that video was posted about a year and a half ago. From the movements I'm presenting here, the rondeau also exists in a version in E minor, something the scribe informs us of, right below the heading of the movement. Since I don't have access to the manuscript or to the complete edition, I haven't been able to look at the E minor version and compare the two, but I still wanted to simply mention the existence of the two versions of this movement. Two of the movements, namely the minuet and the rondeau, have a two-voice texture throughout. By this I do not mean two-voice polyphony, but rather that there are two musical lines consisting exclusively of single notes without any sort of chords. Now, a primarily two-voice texture in itself is not necessarily that unusual, even if it is not particularly common. For example, the concluding minuet from Jean-Philippe Rameau's A minor suite from 1706 is also based on this kind of texture. Rameau, however, breaks the pattern now and then and introduces chords and harmonies, which is something Geoffroy does not do. Furthermore, especially in the rondeau, the two hands are playing quite apart from each other so that the separation between treble and bass is very obvious and this gives the piece a kind of very austere texture. Both the gigue and the chacon introduce different sorts of rhythmic eccentricities. The gigue is in triple meter rather than the perhaps slightly more expected compound duple meter. The opening motive creates a rhythmic ambiguity because from a listener's standpoint, it sounds as if we are beginning on an upbeat, which is not the case. What is actually happening is that the first beat consists of an eighth note rest and an eighth note, and the fact that the second and third beats consist of quarter notes, thus momentarily sounding as if they were stronger beats, throws off our rhythmic perception. And I think this kind of ambiguity creates a feeling of restlessness that persists throughout the piece. Let me show you what I mean. Um, if I look at the gig at the very beginning, if you can't see the score and I simply play it, it sounds something like this. So what happens here is that because we start on this eighth note, you might be tempted to think, okay, well, this is an upbeat and this is a strong beat. But what actually happens is that we start on the end of one, so that if you look at the score, which you will when I play the piece um, in the complete performance, you will notice that what happens is, if I can count along for a moment, is that we go one and two, three, one and two, three, 
and then we get into the pattern. So it's one and two, three. So this is now our first beat. So eventually we can figure out what is going on, but the very beginning, I would say, throws us off. And because this is the main motive, this kind of restlessness, I would say, persists throughout. The Chacon also creates a rhythmic ambiguity, especially when it comes to the bass line. Once again, we are in triple meter, but if I were to play the bass line by itself, you could be fooled into thinking we are in duple meter. Let me show you why. So let me simply play it at first without doing anything, without counting. So this is just the bass line. If you count in two, it would actually work quite nicely because I can go one, two, 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 one, two. And then then the pattern breaks. But what happens is that the way you actually count it is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three. So um, the perception is very different from what you actually see on the page. And then when you add the right hand, it actually doesn't completely help because what happens is this. Again, we start with eighth notes, which can give you the impression that this is an upbeat so that... So the interesting thing is that um, when we start the right hand, of course, we start on the second beat. And the first beat we actually hear is this. So. In other words, the first beat we hear on the right hand, which is the second measure, is actually a dissonance. So um, he introduces a strong dissonance on the first audible shall we say first beat of the right hand couple that with the fact that the left hand subject has this duple meter character to it and you can see how complicated and eccentric it is rhythmically um, this movement so this kind of rhythmic ambiguity i would say is somewhat similar to what we find in the gig perhaps a little bit more extreme. In terms of its form, the chacon is in rondo form, which is fairly typical of French chacons. What this means is that we have a principal theme or refrain that alternates with contrasting sections or themes. In this particular chacon, we have three contrasting sections. And of course, what I played you before is the main theme. So this kind of very rhythmically strange idea keeps coming back. Uh, this movement was also one of the movements I recorded six years ago, and my approach has changed a bit. One of the changes, unsurprisingly, has to do with how I play Nod Senegal. And I would say that what I mentioned in the previous video for the Allemagne La Confidante basically applies here as well, meaning that my usage of Note Senegal is a little less pronounced and also more varied compared to the older recording. Another difference has to do with the registration. For the older recording, I had coupled the manuals so that for the refrain and its reappearances, I used both eight foot stops, while for the contrasting sections, I used the upper manual only. While this approach is perfectly valid, for this new performance, I decided to play the entire piece 
using only the lower manual uncoupled. In other words, just one eight foot stop throughout. This is because on the one hand, I feel that the more subdued sound of the single eight foot stop suits the character of the piece, but I also feel that the contrasting sections are different enough on their own, so there is no reason to use a different registration. This also provides a better sense of continuity throughout the piece. Finally, a couple of words regarding the score you will see accompanying the music. I mentioned in the previous video that I have two editions, a free one available online, which doesn't include all the movements, and copies of the official modern edition of Geoffroy's complete works. There are discrepancies between the two, and I suspect this is due to the fact that the original manuscript is not always clear and also seems to contain a number of errors. And for my performances, I have relied pretty much on the official edition. For the purpose of showing a score along with a performance, the free edition is much easier to read since it's not a photocopy. So for the previous video, what you saw was the free edition. I can't do the same for this video since this free edition doesn't contain all of the movements. So for the first four movements in this video, namely the gavotte, the minuet, the rondeau and the autre courante, what you will see is the official edition. I apologize that the quality is not ideal, but I tried to clean it up as best as I could. For the jig and the chacon, I switch back to the free edition. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the performance.